All Eyes on Fishing with Mitch Peterson, Josh Sheldon, and Brad Qualley, leading you to the next level. Everybody, welcome back to All Eyes on Fishing. I'm going to change it up a little bit tonight, so I'm going to say, hey, everybody! <laughs> <laughs> that was by request, by yeah, the way. So and that was, in a, that was in a listener request? That was a Mitch and Josh yeah, request. Yeah. <laughs> so there it is, changed up. So anyway, we're going to talk about... God. We're going to talk about stuff we're doing right now, midsummer suspended trolling, because it's on fire right now, and if you're not doing it, you really need to. So this is troll. This is in our trolling series number yes, three. Yes, number three. Number three in the in the big series. Yes. All right. So right now we're talking water surface temperatures are usually in that 70 range. Yeah, right, right around oh, 70, yeah, maybe even more in the yeah. shallower lakes. Yep. You know, and, uh, yep. So that's the time frame. If, if you're in a different part of the country, when you hit that hit that time frame, that's what we're talking about, midsummer mm -hmm. uh, suspended trolling. Yeah. Because I think we've talked about it before. I think a lot of guys, uh, you know, come into July, begin of August, whatever that, that temperature range is for your lake, uh, they really think those fish are deep, and they are. There's a lot of deep fisher, but you're missing out, well, especially at night. Yep. Well, you can do it during the day, too. There's a lot of suspended well, fish. I think a lot of the fish do go deep in the summertime when they're neutral or negative. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if it's just out in the basin, that's where they go. Wal walleye midsummer myths. You know, that, they, then I think it, it, that's what it is. They go deep. Well, they go, they're, they're down on the bottom. It's cooler water. It's this, it's that. Um, and again, you know, the high, the high sun, it's daylight for more hours. I just had a guy uh, ask me probably about three or four days ago. He's like, well, walleye fishing shut down for the year. I go, why, did you get a hole in your boat? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, no. Dude, he goes, everybody knows when it gets too hot out, you can't catch them. I go, oh. bull. I go, where are you fishing? He goes, mm, we're not catching any of them casting. No. I said, well, mm -hmm. did you try trolling? He's like, no, nah, you don't. They're too deep. I go, yeah, yeah, you're, you're missing it. Speaking but of it, you know, so, I, so no, I can recall a couple tournaments that we fished in um, where it was a buck five, buck six during the day, oh. and just slayed the walleyes in eight to ten feet of water on simple presentations. But we were, we were in deep water. Bottom. Well, eight to ten is not really deep. No, we were fishing, when we were doing it, it was the same thing. It had to be 100 degrees out. We were fishing in eight feet of water over 90 oh, feet of water. Oh, which could have been, yeah. yeah. Eight yeah. feet deep over. Yes, yeah. that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Or, or if you have uh, trees that grow up high, right? You've got old cottonwoods, submerged cottonwoods, and um, some of these lakes, or, uh, you know, that are, are submerged old riverbeds. And you've got 50-foot cottonwoods, you're in 60 foot of water, but the tips of them are about 10 feet down. Those fish are suspended over 50 feet of water in the tops uh, of those trees. Almost definitely. You know, and because that's where the bait is. And that, and, the, and that's that's the key is, first off, good electronics. And I don't mean you have to have Superman electronics. I'm just saying good electronics that will show you those bait balls. Know what you're looking at and then go find them. Because wherever you find the bait, you're going to find the fish, period. And that's true all year long, but right now in particular. Another thing, too, when you find the balls of bait fish, don't be afraid. Okay, so you're finding balls of bait fish, and those fish are, let's say, 8, 10 foot down is where you're seeing your big marks in those bait fish balls. Is it Once balls you, of bait fish or bait fish balls? Bait balls. fish balls. <laughs> so bait, bait, the bait don't have balls? No. <laughs> it's the balls of bait fish. Well, I mean, they could, but then yeah. you're going to you know, okay, okay, know, right? right. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, flip those two words around. I'm good again. So... But here's what here's what I know that we've done before. When we are seeing those fish marking in that, let's say, 8-foot range, and right. you're over 40, 50 feet, whatever that is, and you have balls of bait fish, maybe, yeah, right? nice work, nice better, nice. and uh, those fish are still going to relate to that outside of those balls of bait fish. So you, if, if you find uh, balls of bait fish in that area, continue to fish that 8-foot, because even when you get outside those balls of bait fish and you're mm -hmm. doing your big turn, let's say, mm -hmm. to go back and find them, you watch your graph. You're still going to see those fish relating to that balls of bait fish to where they just Absolutely. came from. They're still going to be in that eight. They yeah. don't all of a sudden go deep. No. Or all of a sudden, mm -hmm. no, they, they relate to that. So if you find that ball of bait fish and you happen to be 100 yards past it, right. keep fishing right. that yeah. same depth right. because that's where they're going to be. You know, they, say, you're, say you're sitting there in, in 30 feet of water and, and there's a little flat that comes up to about 13 feet and you're you're hammering them in the morning fish are up on top mm -hmm. and you know, know where them. you're going with this yep well here we go um all of a sudden the bite slows down right it, are the fish just stopped eating well 
most likely the fish moved off that structure. They slid out. Yep, and that, that's exactly right. That's that's how Junior says it. They slid <clears throat> out. Yeah. Well, a lot of people think, well, they went deep. You know, it's now the sun's way up, or, or they're done. Shut down. Walleyes yep. don't don't bite during yep, the middle. Yep, they, they went deep for the day. They'll they'll be back up here tonight. Yep, they will be. But they're not going up or down a lot of times. They're just they're in that 13 feet out over that 30, 40 deeper water. What, where and, you found them relating to that mm-hmm. structure early in the morning when it's nice and cool out. Find that same depth right. Right. in deeper yeah. water. Because bait fish are up there eating too. I mean, let's not forget, they have to eat as well. So the bait fish are up there looking for, you know, whatever it is that got blown up, pushed up a shoreline overnight, whatever. And, and They're probably the, looking for food balls. Food balls. <laughs> <laughs> and so they're, you know, they've got to feed, they, they have to feed like everyone else. And so it's important to, to remember and, and also remember too, as you're looking at these bait balls and, and these fish, um, are, are are suspended around them. So you see your arches around them. Fish feed up. Yes. And so if you have a, a very a, a lake here in Colorado has um, a, a smelt in it, and they are deep during the day, and as you move through the day and get closer to dark, those uh, smelt um, schools start to go up towards the surface. They start to rise. And you can the watch fish it. fall. You can, I mean, it's amazing. It is like clockwork, and it is a cr- a very very cool thing to see but, it's eye-opening yes yeah. it really is and so the fish will go from 55 or 60 foot in the middle of the day all the way up to just under the surface to where you're not marking any fish because they are so close to the surface you may see a few on side scan but they're they're all in the clutter they're in the clutter then the first few like foot even six inches of the water so um we have you know remember that those fish feed up so if you see those um bait balls and they're they're up there and the fish are below them there are fish mixed in or close to it they do not try to troll below you know the big schools of bait troll through them or just above them but don't don't try to get underneath them because no, you, you you're are, not, it's not where your fish is. We usually are tried, be. We, I know when we're out doing it, we usually try to keep them in that three foot range. So if mm-hmm. we're marking them at eight, we're running our baits five, six yeah. feet, something like that. And, 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 can you run it right at eight? Yeah. yeah. Or right good. through the middle of it? Yes. Sure. But we seem to do a lot better uh, when you're putting your bait just above the fish. Well, and that's the beauty of, um, you know, fishing a. Uh, fishing planer boards and fishing your your pattern right you got the maybe the two outside boards are up in that three foot above where you're marking fish and maybe the two inside boards are right in the middle of them Mm -hmm. and let's see which ones start popping off yep and 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 that's the way you do it or you have three boards out and one board on one rod is lead core and now you're running the lead core even even closer to the bottom of that you know that split between the bait and the fish you know see if that's what's working um so that's that's a a good thing to keep in mind is that um you know you really need to be able to um get that bait where it needs to be and where it needs to be is above the fish yeah yeah okay good no you know uh i want to talk about speed because here's the deal you know we all speed can vary and we talk about s turns and how you can find the speed right right um i'm a I like to go faster. I think I, I'm I always the one being like, "Hey, let's crank it up. Let's let's hammer down. Let's try it." And Brad's like, "No, no, no, dude, we're we're going four already." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We're on plane. How much yeah. faster can we go? Yeah, our baits um, are skipping yeah. off like we're fishing for tuna on a green stick. <laughs> but I tell you, you know, with the, with the water temp warm like that, hey, it's a proven fact. Their metabolisms at its highest point. They're a, a cold blooded yeah. creature that in that warm water there they can be the most active Dude, i'm telling you when we're pulling like three two yeah. you know 3.2 miles an hour it's nothing no for if, them to load up if you've yeah. ever watched underwater footage of a walleye track a bait that's going two miles an hour it is such little effort for them to get up and hit that bait it is it is like, like when said, they I make the it. decision yeah yep. when they make mm-hmm. the decision it is a couple well, quick you know a couple kicks of that tail and boom they're they're on it well and i and i think why speed works so good though uh, at this time of year with the with the bait fish is because you're going through those balls of bait fish are uh, going exactly. underneath it you're, when you're coming out it looks like it looks like your bait is darting away yep. Yep. at that three trying to get it you know just or it's being chased by another predator something yeah. scrambling Ooh, i gotta get it you know so it I, triggers I, I, well and i think another factor is yeah, it triggers them because it's you know everything's faster so just like in real life you know if 
something uh, you see a, a snake on the ground, oh, you know, if yeah. it was quick, it, it startles you. And I think I think there's a little aspect of that with the fish where all of a sudden, boom, there it is, and the reaction is more of a they don't have time to think about it they don't have time to really assess it mm-hmm. so they may make that quick decision yeah. and eh, we're hoping for the for that bad decision yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, quick, the quick and the bad that yeah. sounds like high school dating you know the quick and the bad because you're <laughs> but that's the funniest part is that if you uh um <laughs> if you go sounds like juniors high school dude. <laughs> I know that's what I was thinking. <laughs> no. Anyway, if you go if you go um at, at at 2 miles an hour and you want to start testing it out, S turns are the best way to start that process. Yes. Because your outside board will typically go closer to that 3, 3 and a half, maybe even 4 depending on how tight you're turning and how much you're whipping them around. But you will see. I mean, on those hot days, all of a sudden you make a turn and your outside board is Gone. You know what? I'm going to try this this year when we really get get into this. Not um, fishing with Brad, no. so you can have a good time. <laughs> no, I have a good time with Brad. As long as we're catching fish, I mean, that's no fun. As long as you pull the boat with the short um, bus. Who, who's at this time of year? Who's trolled at one mile an hour? I I don't know. I I really have you. Well, just Before with spinners. You say, with spinners. No, I'm talking crankbaits. Okay, not with just, crankbaits. Just like if it's November and the and it's getting ready for ice on and it's cold. We're, you know what? I think I, I, we have it because we're fishing. You're, I see where you're going with that yeah, because we fish your memory. Be different. We fish. We know that that faster bait works. So, but yes, yeah, so that faster bait, given the the oh, you know, the quick strike and it's fleeing the the group or whatever for whatever reason. Oh, here's one that's wounded or going way slower than the rest of them, maybe yeah. or. I'm just well, going to try why, it. That's why I say that, well, we do do that, though, dude, because we're paying attention to our S-turns when we're yeah. doing that. So right. So it could be the inside board that drops your inside down. But that one, and, one yeah. five and, and we've talked about that, that it does slow down that much. So, well, I'm well, still trying, trying it. Yeah. Yeah. Still, I'm still trying You could it. do slower, or I mean, smaller crankbaits if you're going to do that, too. I think you got to stick with the fives. Well, okay. let's just talk about that. Okay, we've t- we're talking cranks, right? Because that's what we're going to be pulling is crankbaits and Mostly. whatever. Yeah, yeah. For the I mean, you can part. do spinners, absolutely. Yeah, but, but let's talk cranks. So what are we using for crankbaits this time of year? Sevens. Yep. Mm-hmm. Sevens. Sevens are, are the, the magic number this time of year. It is. And and you start off sevens like I do. April. I use sevens almost all the time. Yeah, and we run fives up until about now, and now it's se- seven time. Yeah. We're going sevens. It, and it even is. the nine, not flicker minnows, like the yeah. nines. Yeah. yeah, we'll run those. Yeah, two. the the nine flicker minnows and well, and the elevens we'll do at night. At night, but not, we don't do that well with them during the day. For and I don't yeah, know why. I don't know why. Well, on the Great Lakes we did, but here, no, right here, here we, we don't. don't. And no. I don't know why. Usually, it's that seven seems to be predominant. And and I would say uh, probably ninety percent of what we're running, or at least seventy five percent, is a Berkeley flicker shad number seven. Yeah. I would say. Yeah, I, I would say. And, and, you on know, our and, boat, yeah. yours, I don't know what you No, mean. it's, it's. I mean, you kidding me. If I put another flicker shed on my boat, it might sink. But uh, what I have noticed, and, and I will give props to this bait because it has been producing more. Um, they're a fortune, but they are, they have been pretty good, is uh, Salmo Hornets. So the small ones. And I mean the really small ones, like, the fours mm-hmm. and the, the fives. Well, uh, you can run those fast. And you can run them fast. And they seem to be pretty productive mm-hmm. um so so i will give a shout out to those i mean you know the shad wraps were always the the mainstay and i and i just think flicker blows those away now i mean i my shad wrap boxes almost don't make the trip you i know? haven't even looked at them in the store i know yeah well <laughs> they're so expensive i walked by with well know. and we still have a pile of them right but when we're out trolling right now we'll throw them on but they're quick to come off. We rotate our baits. Like so yeah. like that's the one thing I want to talk about. So we're gonna run four lines because we're running boards or, or long line, but usually we're running four boards, two off each side. Sure. And uh we rotate our baits like every ten minutes or so. We're gonna pull one in, try and jump yeah. until we find the color pattern that's working yeah. and what vibration factors working, whether that's a five, seven, a flicker minnow nine, yeah. whatever it is, and then you start dialing it in. And we do, we run We'll run the hot and tots. We run the yeah, hot and tots storms. are great still. We we run the storms, the smash shots. Yeah. We do we do a lot of those, but it seems like it ends up after about an hour. Yeah, we're back to the all, all flickers. flickers. Yeah, and, oh, I agree. And it, it, it's just because it's a quality. Ba- it really is. Yeah, and into into to, to go on top of it, the new jointed flickers have oh been my just. God. We've been killing that. God, one. they've been fish producing baits, and you know we've posted some pictures talking about it and, and showing. I can't decide what colors pattern I like. The best. Well, even the wild color pattern seem to I work. I know, crazy. Um, so you know, I'm a big fan of the silvers and the natural colors, but man, 
uh, you know, the, the some of the ones with the red tails and the, I just, it, it's really hard for me to say which is my favorite. The only thing you do have to watch is um, more when you're casting than when you're trolling them, but those hooks will hook up on they each do. other. They do a lot. So you got to watch that, that back That's hook one, doesn't grab. One, I, I think if you were going to say a flaw of that, is they're, they're hard you're to casting cast. casting them. Yeah, just because of that hook. But, but you know, fishing them casting, I've had a lot of success I, yeah. this year on so that is definitely a good thing. But I, I would also like to point out, too, when we're talking about how you set up your rods and you, you want to run your pattern, there's two patterns to not overlook when you're, you're going after these fish. One is is the two boards, one on each side, and running either lead core or long lining off the back of your boat. Or a snap um, weight. Or a snap weight. Mm-hmm. Those can be very productive ways of catching fish this time of year. You don't have to run four boards no. um, we all like to do it because it keeps the baits up separates them but you, you get a get, lot of control with four boards well but you get on those busy lakes on a saturday and people are going to run over your stuff and um you know it, it can ruin a day losing a planer board and so um so you can do it you can you can run it straight off the back you can suck in the planer boards a little closer to get you that separation and still be very successful catching fish so so look at those different ways you can also long line on your outside rods, no planer boards. Just get a, if you have 10 foot or 12 foot rods, um, it works well. Um, run uh, long line on the outside and lead core on the inside. And that offsets those baits and it keeps it from getting tangled. And you can be real precise. You can mm-hmm. be very precise about how you fish a pot of fish or whatever. Yeah, and some things, some guys though, if you're running shorter rods for your lead core for your two inside rods, uh, you got you, you got to be really careful with tight S turns because they're, yeah. because they're so so slow to react. Yes. When that inside one, it'll drop straight, and that back one or the out the outside leg core will then tangle up. Yes. So you got to be careful with that. Yeah. And think. just so you know, what we're talking about when we say short rods are the stubbies. Yeah. Five yeah. and a half. Foot. About the yep. Five stubbies. foot. Yep. Six foot. Yep. Shorties. We call them shorties. shorties. We call them stubbies. Stubbies. Yep. Yeah. Shorty stubbies, but you yeah. know they're they're short. They're usually like steelhead type rods. Um, we run the ugly stick ones on all of them. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, if you're looking for them in, like, a, a catalog or online, you can find them. They, they may not necessarily be the trolling rods. They may be a um, – I, I think mine were the Cabela's rods, but I think they were meant for some sort of trout fishing, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, But they uh, – they really do work well to give you that separation, but you do have to be careful with those turns. On the turns. Yeah. yeah, and it's fun catching fish on them. I mean, they are usually pretty well, soft. Well, and I'll tell you, when you, you know. they're soft, yeah. But when you hook up with one, too, there's no doubt. No, there's no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> that little rod's if, going everywhere. Especially if you're cooking at three miles uh, I know, yeah. that baby loads up. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> and, I, and I'll tell you something else. It's something I learned at this last tournament, and I didn't... I didn't know if, if this happens, but if you are, if you haven't done lead core, listen to our lead core podcast. Get lead core rods set up because between now and fall, and even in the fall, lead core is going to be, you know, a big tool for you. Well, and that, that we can talk about this in another podcast. Know, but, but well, one thing I want to say lead is, core. is if you are like, oh, that sounds like a great idea. I got my lead core rods. Um, lead core does go bad. And I, I didn't think it could. I didn't, you know, it's just one of those things where it doesn't rust. It doesn't. Uh, in this last tournament, I, I broke lead core on my older lead core rods um, uh, several times. Mm-hmm. And so it has to be going back. How how old it, was it? Because ours, we, we changed ours out of like four years. And it seemed yeah, mine's, yeah, mine's probably closer to eight. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I suppose. But I, I wouldn't think it. You know, it doesn't, the sheath really doesn't have mm-hmm. a whole lot to do with mm-hmm. the, the strength of the lead. The lead doesn't rust. But it is getting It breaks weak. down. It, it has must. to be. It, it has, has to. Um, so we, on some of our older lead rods that we had before we started switching them out every four years, we had that problem. Yeah. Some were breaking yeah. off. And, and I, I try to take care of mine. I don't let them sit out in the sun. They're in the rod locker when they're not being used. They're in the garage when they're not in the rod locker. So to keep that, that sun that deteriorates the line. So I thought I was pretty good. And um, no, it 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 broke numerous times. So I think it has to be replaced. Yeah. It does. It, it does because we had that issue before. I mean, with some of our – because, well, we went out pre-fishing in an April tournament, and we had old lead on there. We're like, mm, this stuff is pushing it. Because yeah. I didn't – my rods were in his boat, so we used some that I had in my garage that yeah. were probably that eight-year mark. Yeah. And we had we struggled with it. So yeah. we're like, no, yeah. all new lead. Yeah, and it's expensive, but it, it's you, you have to you do get, it. But you get – a good four years out of it, right? Right, right. I mean, well, and, and I, I use the 18. I know you guys use the uh, the heavier lead. Um, and so, but it was breaking before the 10-pound mono. 
Yeah, that's not good. And, and, you know, and that includes the knots. And usually when you get a break with lead cords up by the knot. and So when we're talking trolling these crankbaits, yes. we're using speed clips, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yep. Um, are you guys running fluorocarbon leaders? No. Because we've talked about them a lot well, in podcasts, and I want guys to know. So sometimes I, you I can. I tell you what, if I'm going to Pueblo where it's crystal clear, if we're going to go do this, mm-hmm. you bet I'm going to tie on some. Yeah. I go. I just do the. 10 I just go so straight mono. I mean, I know you yeah. say that because I say that because I want it, want to, but you I really probably, don't. Yeah. You really don't. I mean, we've been doing it for how many years? So let's talk leader length real quick. If you're going to do lead core, what's your leader length? You 25. guys do it different. You guys do 25. I do 10. I know we do 25, 26 right in there, and they're all set up the same. Yeah, and I do 10 because I like to connect mine to you a swivel. A, you use a teeny swivel, and if and that swivel will hit the uh, guide and the reel and stop. And if I have 25, I it's too much line out there. I can't, you know, it's hard mm-hmm. to get the fish up to the boat. If I do 10, I get it up to the net, no problem. So yeah, mm-hmm. well, we just use that. I mean, we got a, a YouTube video on it too, where we we tied a, a Smith knot in it, yeah. and it works good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I understand. Oh, well, it wasn't a Smith knot. Remember, what I know we it's come not, up but that's, it, what yeah. we, that's what we're calling it because that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's what to us we call it a Smith. Yeah. Knot. And that the whole key with that is just making sure it's tied good. You know, yes, that's the key. We've never had one come out, but no. I've heard that that's the problem with that knot. Nah, yeah, just make sure it's in there deep enough before you do it. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I think uh, to wrap this one up, that it's it's good info that this is where they are this time of year. I've had a lot of we've had a lot of questions on email and Facebook and stuff like, you know, hey, I'm having a hard time. Uh, you know, wh- wh- where are they right now, or and what what can I do? You're sliding out. You're sliding out, and 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 also remember this time of year, and we'll cover this probably in another podcast. Um, you know, this is where you start to transition to some of those glide baits. So don't. Don't overlook that this time of year either. But as far as it goes for trolling, it's a little bit later, a little bit longer or later, we're going to use the glide bites. But we're also going to start fishing more at night too. Uh, come mid August, around those bigger here. fish are going to put on the feedback. Oh my god, no. yeah. it's so, going to be awesome! Fun times, yeah, fun so, times. So, but then we're using the stick baits. Yeah, but we'll, we'll talk about that in our next podcast. Night night fish trolling for yeah. uh, for our, our final our fourth fourth trolling one. Yeah. Tro- fourth trolling one because yeah, that'll so. be. That'll probably be another four or five weeks we'll start transitioning yep. to that. So pull out the size sevens and uh, get out there and get to it. Because Find your fish on your structure in the morning and don't forget to push out. Find those balls of yep. fish and start working. Yeah, the second they turn off, and it may be an hour after sunup, it may be two hours after sunup, or it may be at sunup itself. But the second you quit catching them up, up closer to shore, uh, slide out and start your trolling because that's where those fish are going to be. Yep. So... Well, from everybody here at All Eyes on Fishing, we'd like to thank you for following us and sharing us with your friends. Uh, make sure that if you, if you do us a favor and if you have more questions like some of our listeners, send us an email at alleyesonfishing at gmail.com. Uh, we try to get back with them within, you know, three, four days, sometimes a week uh, to try to answer your questions. Uh, but we do it. We do like the interaction. Yeah, it's, it's really good. And we get a lot of good questions. And guys, please be patient with us. There's only three of us. We're all going to opposite sides of the planet it feels like and um so uh, as you can see sometimes our podcast might be a day or two late because we're you know right now we're sitting in the parking lot uh at football practice uh, taping this so that's what we're, we're trying to do so we can get this to you guys so please be patient we will answer you i promise it just may take a little bit um because you know we all have to work too so <laughs> get out and fish yeah get, get out, out and fish, fish. yep Go catch so, and, and, and 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 buy a hat buy a shirt we're going to start doing giveaways um, but go, you know, go check out our stuff. We put a lot, I mean, a ton of new stuff at lower prices um, on the webpage. So go check it out. Check it out. Have a good night. Yep. Thanks. This has been All Eyes on Fishing. Thank you for joining us. Join us again next time where we discuss all of your favorite fishing topics. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Check out our videos on YouTube. Or read our blog at alleyesonfishing.com. All Eyes on Fishing, leading you to the next level.